Welcome back to the channel. Today I have a special guest, Alex from The Car Creative. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel, um, The Car Creative, so you gotta go check him out. He does some pretty amazing work, fantastic um, cinematography, and uh, I guess learning opportunities for people to do uh, photo editing, uh, especially in the niche of, of cars. Yes. So today what I thought that we would do um, I'm going to show Alex uh, how to use the Gaggia Classic Pro. We're going to make a couple espressos, yes. uh, use the rock grinder, and uh, take him through a little bit of a workflow. We'll see how he does. <laughs> and then I'm going to do my best to interview Alex and, and uh, fire a couple curveballs at him and see what he says right. as far as, uh, <laughs> as, far as uh, some car questions and some automotive kind of oh, kind of nice. stuff. So we'll see how he yeah, does. Zero prep. Like I have no idea what's coming, so this is going to be a good time. <laughs> I'm a little intimidated by the machine, but we'll see if some of my previous experience comes in handy. I think you're going to do just fine if you have a little bit of experience. This is kind of like essentially driving a manual car. Okay? Perfect. So Save the manuals. Exactly. Exactly. I dig it. I know enough that like you got to press it the right amount to get the perfect... But I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Alright, all right. I'm pumped. Alright, so first thing we're going to do... I'm going to have you uh, grab the beans and turn on the scale, scale so it's a, a fancier scale. You're going to push down on the bottom right corner. How hard? There it is. Nice. <laughs> awesome. Tar or tear? Tear? Tar? Tear? Tear. Tear the scale. How do I do that? Yeah, you just push. Nice. And it's 20 gram coffee. And this is like a one cup at a time kind of deal, right? This is, or yeah. Can we make it? Okay. Come on, baby. 20.4? Yeah, that works, that works. Good, one more. Nice. And just give it a Morocco shake. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. I don't know how to dance. I don't know why I did that. How did you guys used to dose beans in, uh, at Starbucks? Oh, dude, it was easy. easy. Like, it all just lived in a hopper, like on top of the thing. And then you just push buttons. Oh, so this awesome. is this is like very much more manual. And this is the, the boring, annoying part. I usually like to put my hands kind of like that to keep it steady. Okay. But you do you, whatever makes you feel comfortable. Oh, I'll do that. This feels so old school. So I dig it. So old school. <laughs> like like churning butter, but coffee. Tastes even better. Like it actually takes forever? Uh, not forever. Probably a couple of minutes. <laughs> Nicole says she gets a good workout in. Yeah, I'm like, this is going to be my shoulder workout for the yeah. day. So this is enough for one cup, meaning I'm going to have to do this again. You're going to have to do this again. Or we're going to compare, like you're going to make one and I'm going to make one and we'll see whose coffee comes out better. Alright. The only time I've ever posted coffee on my, on my Instagram was when I tried to pour my foam and it literally turned out in the shape of a penis. Oh no! I'll send it to you and you can put it Please, in the video because yes, it's yes. so funny. I love that. Next thing we're going to do is you're going to take this guy. This is a distribution tool. Okay. And the way that it works, you can kind of play around with it, but it has a, an insert inside that you can pull out. Okay. And then there's a hole at the bottom, right? Yep. The look of like confusion. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. Am I trying to make like even around uh, the no, thing? No, you don't even have to worry about that. You just got to get it into the hole. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> give it a shake. Yeah, give it a up shake. Up and down? Yeah. Left and right? Out. Give her a hug, man. Shake it up like a cocktail. A lot of, a lot of penis and... <laughs> hey. nice. And then what you're going to do, you're going to place that uh, magic tumbler right on top. It has a bit of a groove so it'll sit in the porta filter. You're essentially going to wiggle that thing out. This is terrifying. <laughs> so this, this thing so that it all comes out the bottom. You got it. Sheesh. This is by far the most complicated coffee I've ever made. And then I'm pulling this off. You're going to pull that off. Alright. There it is, nice. I'm gonna give it a, a an A. An A for sure. Nice. Shake and bake. And this is the this is the fun bit. This is where you tamp it down. Big tamp guy. Like here? You got it. And you then want how to make hard? It nice and nice and level. Fairly good amount of pressure. Not your whole body weight, but a good amount. <laughs> I think we got it. So basically because the the machine has a, a small boiler and it's used as the actual heating unit for the espresso and the boiler for the, the uh, steam. What you wanna do is kind of flick this on and get rid of any steam in the group pad when you brew. Otherwise, that steam is gonna blow through your espresso and it's gonna screw up all that harder puck prep that you did. <laughs> so, you see all that steam coming out. Wait for the gurgle to stop. 
and then we are ready to get into brewing some coffee. It's all you, man. Okay. It's all you. Okay, so then this goes in. And everything is prepped up for you pretty much to... Um, to pour. To pour, yeah. Whenever you're ready, coordination Ross. here. You're not left handed. It is. Okay. Come on, baby. Give me right. That's pretty good. Come together. There it is. It's pretty creamy. It is very creamy, man. But I think that's pretty good. 24 seconds. And then I just flick this. Yeah, back exactly. Up. Here we go. Nice. There's your espresso. Hey, my man, my man. Have a sip. What do you think? You sure. It smells yeah. like coffee. It's good. First impressions. Well, that's good. Yeah. It's it's strong. Yeah. I'll tell you that. <laughs> that is a strong cup of espresso. Do you know what get, you know what irks me the most? What's that? When people call it espresso. Oh, it's can we not just get a, that? Yeah, can you we can't. just get that clear? It if you're espresso. watching this and you've ever called anything like this espresso, just cut, nothing, just cut it out. Nothing express about it. No. There's nothing express about it. No. That took forever. That took forever. <laughs> Put that in there and we're going to steam some milk. Oh boy. So good. You know, I can see it, you as a barista. Thanks, I think you do a really good job. It was the green apron. It was, it was really good for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you the trick with basically doing the steam on this machine pressure. So what you want to actually do is hit this, time it, so you get around 25 seconds. Yeah. That way, when you actually start steaming, the boiler's still going. You have lots of steam power out of it. I'm already intimidated, that's for sure. This is the fun part. Some people in the comments were making fun of my little milk pitcher. It looks like a Turkish coffee thing. I'm like, all right guys, I'm not rich. I mean, you gotta do it. You gotta do it. Just leave it in there, or are we trying to like frothy foam it? What are so, we doing? So I'll, I'll guide you through it. I'll guide you through it when you're, when you're on. We're doing it live. 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 We'll do it live. Do it live. We're gonna do it live. Do it live, kid. <laughs> okay. All right, flick so the. Flick it. 25 seconds. 25 seconds, you're gonna purge. Flick in time. Uh, we got a latte, a cappuccino, a couple of Americano. Okay, 25 seconds. Hit, purge it. Right away. Close it. Flip it out of the way. There it is. Move this. Yeah, and then open it all the way. Open it all the way. All the way. All the way. Is that all the way? I think so. And then you want to get it right at the very surface. So it kind of makes like a ripping noise. That's the one. Oh, dude, I got soft hands. It's gonna hurt quick. That yeah, means it. it's around 50 degrees, and then you close it off. Nice. Pull that baby out. I'm not impressed. I'm not happy. Dude, I think you did pretty good. Actually. I'm not happy. What's your latte art skills? This oh, is gonna man. Be amazing. I really hope this doesn't turn into a peen. Oh, come on, baby. Looking pretty good so far. Where's that foam? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't make any foam. <laughs> Shit. Damn it. There it is. There's my blob. There it is. is it a piece? Uh, I don't know. It actually kind of looks like a galaxy. Comment. Comment down below what, what you that? think it looks like. Yeah, Although like yeah. Starbucks, Starbucks wasn't known for latte art, right? That's true. You just crank them out. That's you just true. dump in the milk, get it gone. All right. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna whip one up here for you. Let's whip well. it. Coffee. Uh, performance. Imagine what Nick on the designer does. Tribute. See if I can make some latte art here. There's no chance, man. Uh, I call it the onion. I'll call it the onion. That's my go-to. Which one? And I gotta give it to you. I mean, yours been sitting for a little bit, <laughs> so that's that's kind of you. Thanks, thanks for the benefit of the doubt. I, I wish I filmed it more, <clears throat> but I got soft hands, so that's it, got, the, it got hot. The got hardest hot part about it is the foam. All right, cheers. Cheers, man. Thanks I'm for giving me the good one. Yeah. yeah. Man, excellent job. Absolutely phenomenal. I got zero complaints. Espresso. Espresso. Taste. It's really Nothing good. like it. And it's fun looking at a swan while you drink it too. I can't say that uh, a YouTube celebrity has uh, made me coffee before, so. <laughs> it's also the first time I've ever been called a YouTube celebrity. So I have a few questions. Okay. And I know that um, 
Some people might find this interesting. You have a job, you're on YouTube, you're mm -hmm. kind of uh, got a big following now. So I'm sure some people are probably curious about some of this stuff. So my number one question is, uh, what is your day job? What do you do during the day outside of YouTube? Do you have a day job? I do have a day job. So from eight o'clock to four o'clock, I work for a private school. And I am there, the easiest way to say it is I do their marketing. So photography, videography, mm -hmm. uh, and I've been doing that for them for eight years. Okay. And um, you know, truth be told actually, I don't own a single camera. Oh, no way. Personally, I don't personally own anything. Um, through my course of working at the school, they've trusted me enough to yeah. and encouraged me to go make my own money I outside of the school. So uh, they're very supportive and a really, really great company to work for. So very cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm really fortunate to have like the opportunity to like test things out and yeah. at my job like research which camera would be best yeah, for yeah. what we do at the school, which is a, my primary function. But then also like how can I use this tool to teach the people in the car creative how to do what I do. Yeah. So nice. it's, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty unique situation. Uh, so I feel very fortunate. To very, have very cool. Nice. How did you get into being um, into YouTube and making videos um, mm -hmm. and kind of into this whole new chapter of your life? Yeah. I mean, probably like a lot of people on YouTube or in the filmmaker space, you watch people like Peter McKinnon and Maddie Hapoya. And as I was saying too, like the more I would look into cameras, you a lot of the time you're looking up reviews on YouTube, those kinds of things. And it's very interesting now to see that I'm one of those people. It's very, very odd to think yeah. about. But yeah, just inspired by those people. And they always kept saying, like, find a niche, like, yeah. or, or do what you're passionate about. And uh, over time, I kind of decided to take what I was learning over the last, you know, it was five years at that point with photography and videography and turn that into a passion of mine, which is cars. So I guess it was two and a half, three years ago. I just decided I was going to shoot some cars and I started asking friends and family. I shot like my wife and I's like uh, photos or videos? photos, uh, videos. I didn't do so much at the time, but I like took my wife's 2006 Honda Civic, which I'm still driving. And that I used that car to learn how to use like a polarizer filter. Yeah. Uh, and then I, we shot our new like SUV that we would get. And then I started just telling people, yeah. Oh, and we went to an auto show and I was such a dumb kid. Cause like I went up to the guys at Porsche. And I just like handed them a business card from my place of work yeah. being like, Hey, like I really want to shoot cars. And they're like, great kid, <laughs> you know, Scram. but they were, they were nice That's enough, cool. but I was bold enough to like ask. So I took some photos at the, the car show and then just kind of, and those are the first photos you'll see at the bottom of my Instagram page. Very good. Cool. Uh, yeah. Car show photos was there, of my rogue. And was there like a, a comment or something that was like, I got to do this again. Or was that like, I just enjoy doing it. I'm going to do it again, whether people like it or don't like it. For me, it started because it is truly something I'm passionate about yeah. and I do it. I do the car photography, the videography, because that's what I want to do. Yeah. I love it. I'm taking this skill of photography and videography and I, I don't really get paid that much to do it, honestly. Yeah. Um, so I do it because I love it. That's the only reason. Um, and then I decided, Hey, like maybe other people want to learn how to do it. And yeah. that's where the YouTube channel came from. Um, because I got connected with a local dealership through a friend and they needed content for their Instagram So I just kind of kept shooting their Corollas and their SUVs and I remember the first time I ever shot uh, a supercar the McLaren MP4 12C Spider that same weekend I was shooting like the Toyota Sienna so a oh, minivan no. <laughs> So like I literally went from shooting probably the one vehicle you never want to shoot a minivan to one of the coolest cars I'd ever shot in the same weekend so it was pretty crazy how it, I guess it all yeah. developed and went on, but yeah, it was a fun, fun little journey. That's really cool. So speaking of supercars, um, favorite car to drive so far with kind of within your um, experiences? So it still takes a bit to let people that have fancy cars let you drive them. Mm -hmm. um, some of the funnest cars I've been in is the McLaren MP4 12C Spider. Yeah. I know a lot of people beak it on the YouTube because mechanically it maybe isn't the most like reassuring vehicle, but being in that car is phenomenal, very fast. Uh, the Porsche Taycan Turbo S, I did have the opportunity to drive and that car will floor you. You can go watch the video on that. My reaction is I think I saw stupid. That it's just, just ridiculous. Giggling. <laughs> I'm just giggling like I'm in shock. Um, 
The one car I, I did get to drive that was a really good time was a Mercedes-Benz um, AMG GTS. Oh, no way. And Porsche Center Calgary lent me that for the weekend and they gave me a 100 kilometer limit and I used every single one of them. Amazing. And that car ripped. It sounded good. It it that was the first time I like took my wife out on a date in it. Yeah. Like it was like V it was turbo so, so fun. Three. Yeah. Oh man. It was unbelievable. That's really cool. So that was one of the most fortunate times I got to drive. Uh, speaking of supercars, what's your dream car? <laughs> one car. Ooh. That's mean. I could give you my dream list. But the, the, one the, car, one the car top. today. So everyone knows that I'm a Porsche guy. Yeah, yeah. And I want to own Porsches. Yeah. But that's not the top. Okay, okay. So anyone that's watching this from my channel will be like, what? I want a Porsche. Like, I want m many Porsches throughout my life, maybe. But I think probably McLaren. McLaren. And I really like like the six seven fives, like not the seven twenty. Like that one's a bit, it's a bit wavy for me. Probably mm -hmm. phenomenal to drive, but for some reason I really like like the six seven fives, uh, the six hundreds, just because they like they're more smaller and nimble. And I think they're sexy as hell. Yeah, so, I have to agree. Yeah. yeah. By the um, time I can own one, hopefully I can afford that they'll break down. <laughs> you can pick one up <laughs> yeah. from parts. Yeah, That's but awesome. uh, I'm excited about maybe ever owning one of those in satin black satin black yeah huh? okay, so okay. if i build a collection it's going to be like some kind of shady it'll be like the 50 shades of gray i'll get you the gajia <laughs> classic and you can there you go up. exactly <laughs> yeah um okay so speaking of dream cars and kind of like uh here's a tough choice at least for me and i don't know if it will be okay. for you yeah you have a choice between a, a Porsche Carrera GT or a Ferrari Enzo? Porsche Carrera GT every time. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Even over an Enzo? I think so. Yeah, fair. I, I mean, like, but Ferrari for me hasn't, I haven't been in a Ferrari yet. Okay. I haven't been around many Ferraris. Yeah. So the magic of Ferrari, I haven't, I don't think I've fully experienced yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas Porsche, I've experienced and I like, I understand it and I get like, the why behind Porsche, yeah. and I really dig that. Yeah. Uh, but I'm sure Ferrari will convince me at some point. Like if you get in there and you hear, hear it, I'm sure it'll. It has magic to it. I just haven't been there yet. What What do you got going on in the next year? What are you looking forward to? Hmm. Well, the future's uncertain. So I'll give Safe you. Answer. I'll give you my hopes and dreams for the okay. next year. All right. With the YouTube channel growing, with. Uh, getting more and more opportunities with sponsorships and those kinds of things through YouTube. Yeah. I think what I'd like to do for myself, for the channel, for the car creative business is get a car that I can use full time uh, for me because I enjoy driving and I don't really want to drive a 2006 Honda Civic anymore. Yeah. Um, but I'd like to have that car that I can shoot full time that if I want to go teach the people on the car creative how to do something, I just whip out my garage and yeah, do yeah. instead of have to call <laughs> someone up and be like, hey, let's go for a rip and whatever. And that would give sponsors the opportunity to help me build out my car. I want to mm -hmm. learn about cars. I don't know much about them. I know lots about cameras, but I'd like to learn how to, you know, do installs and change the engine and make more horsepower and yeah. tweak the suspension and all those things and do that yeah. with my own hands. Because as much as I want the Porsches, uh, I want to like learn what a car is first and kind of go through the whole experience. So that'd be the best case scenario, is get a car with this year at some point. I mean, we're about to head into winter in Calgary, so we'll see if that's any good, but that'd be best case scenario. Get a car, teach more, make more videos, yeah. keep growing, maybe get a 100K plaque. Final question, five years from now, what does that look like? Mm. Got a house in the hills. <laughs> I don't know. I, I really want like is this this balance right between work life happiness and that's yeah. really important to me. So that's why when people are like, why aren't you posting every week? I'm like, well, I've got stuff in life. Mm -hmm. Five years from now, I want to be like full time working for myself. Yeah. Have employees. Have great cars. Have like the perfect house that my wife wants. Mm -hmm. You know, be able to provide for her and my family if that ever happens. And uh, I, I would love, love, love to build a garage. 
Yeah. Like a like a proper garage, big enough for like ten cars. Yeah. But that's like lit. Yeah. Like yeah. has lighting and like you can you can do you can like park there. your car in it and like people are like, where are you shooting that? I'd be like in my garage, bitch. That's, that's like, my house. <laughs> come over. Like come park your car. Do you have a target for five years from now? I'll answer with this first. Three and a half years ago, mm -hmm. I set a five year goal. Yeah. To be able to leave my job. Yeah. Making more money. Yeah. Doing what I love. So we're three and a half years yeah. in. We're pretty close. And then the next five year goals will come. I mean, that'll probably be cool car ownership. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. What are your five year goals with caffeine and gasoline? Or like, what's your, what's yeah, your yeah. trajectory? Where are you oh, going? yeah. My, man, my trajectories are, are uh, pretty humble. Um, I want to get like a, a, a a fancier espresso machine, even fancier. And, yeah, even fancier, a double boiler machine or a two boiler machine, um, and a really nice grinder, and uh, and I want to um, yeah help people kind of explore like coffee and uh, share some of my passions as far as automotives. Nice. I grew up in uh, um, my dad was a big car guy, and I remember as a kid. Uh, we'd go like through the parking lots and he'd be pointing at cars and be like, what brand is that? Oh, Mercedes, Volkswagen. I was like this little kid, right? Yeah. Um, and I used to have even like this journal where I'd, I'd stick in pictures of different cars and stuff like that. So I, I had a picture of an Enzo back then and, um, and like, yeah, just, so I want to, I want to get into some supercars. I want to drive yeah. some fun, fun things. Nice. And, uh, yeah, I'm a... I'm a fan. I want to kind of go in that direction, but uh, for now, I think you know. Um, I just started my career as a physio, and uh, I'm loving that. And I think uh, ideally, this is my ideal situation. Yep. I have a clinic where um, it's going to shake up what physiotherapy looks like, and within that clinic, there is parking for supercars. Come on. So my, my, two, my two big passions are, are rehab and uh, amazing quality cars um, and coffee. So you're, you'll always be able to get a coffee on my <laughs> yeah, <that's> <laughs> So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Awesome, man. Yeah. Well, yeah. you got a good start. Hey, man, this I appreciate cool. it. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. Thank you for, for your house. Uh, coming on the coffee. show. Thank yeah, you for coming on the show. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you guys have any questions for Alex, Comment below and definitely check out his channel. He's got the most amazing content. Absolutely aesthetically pleasing to, to watch. And uh, he's got some pretty interesting videos on, on how to make reels and how to basically um, take, well, you have really good photos, but you could take a kind of a junk photo and then with some of your tips, yeah. turn it into a pretty amazing, yeah. amazing Ed Editing stuff. is 80% of the work for sure. Yeah. And, um, he has an unbelievable Instagram channel too. He's really open. You can ask him anything and he'll get back to you right away. And, um, very, very humble guy. This guy's got a, a sure, big, man. big future ahead of him. So I'm excited. Thank you for coming and um, hope, um, thank you for the coffee as well. Thank you for the coffee. Cheers. Cheers. As always, remember, stay caffeinated. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Ah, nice. Perfect timing.